Fiction for Adults presents a romantic suspense audio drama. Because reality is overrated. The following day, Jags left work early and met Star and Tilly at Zeke's hunting lodge, just north of Sam Houston National Forest. Star, Tilly, and he spent the next hour decorating the luxury hunting lodge with streamers, balloons, and glitter. Now that Jax's brother was marrying Star's best friend, their circle of friends merged, and he was forced to get to know the real Star. And he had fallen in love with her. As luck would have it, she was engaged to another man. Sometimes life really sucked. You have nothing to fear. <laughs> <laughs> Balancing on the top rung of an aluminum ladder, he looked down. Star handed him a piece of tape. Don't be stingy. Let me know if you need more. We don't want it falling down. Does it matter? Because the only thing going on here Saturday is loads and loads of hardcore sex. <laughs> Ugh, could you try for five seconds not to be you? On second thought, I bet there's some fun stuff you could do with streamers. Just some food for thought. Walking backward, she unrolled the streamer, twisting the roll over and over in her hand until she reached Tilly, who stood on her own tall ladder. Jags jumped from his ladder, his neon yellow sneakers leading the way. He bought the sneakers to match his favorite yellow t-shirt. Printed on the front in black block lettering was the phrase, hey bitch, try sex, it really works. He surveyed the room and rubbed his hands together. It looks fantastic. How did you get Mr. Chase to offer you his cabin, no strings attached, for an entire weekend? I know you guys are friends, but I mean, he's a billionaire. He must have lots of friends. I can be very persuasive when I want to be. He elbowed Star. Ain't that right, sugar? Undeterred by Star's scowl, Jags clapped his hands. Who's good at blowing? <laughs> Excuse me? He dangled a bag of balloons. Blowing. Hi, hon. Jax couldn't hear the other side of the conversation. But judging from the moisture in her eyes, he could wager that it was Nate the only person who could reduce her to tears so quickly. Tilly tossed her phone in her purse, wiped a tear from her eye, and walked outside. We have to do something. We? Let's work together and fix them before they get to the point of no return. They need time. It's only been five weeks. And while we're giving them time, we're just supposed to watch while their marriage implodes? What did you have in mind? Okay, hear me out. What if you and Ty drag them on a double date into Houston? 
I could work my magic with Zeke and get you last minute reservations at some fancy schmancy restaurant. Ty works most nights. Take me. He crossed his hands over his heart. I promise I won't hit on you or insult you. Mm mm. Jags took her hand in his. I don't know what's going on with Nate and Tilly, but I have a feeling it's intense. We've got to at least try to help them. It's not our place. Let them work this out on their own. Not in my nature. <sighs> when? Tonight. Tomorrow is Kim's bachelor party. Talk to Nate. I'll talk to Tilly. Fantastic. If we're going to do this, we need to get going. Grabbing her by the hand, Jags let her out the door. Tilly sat in the passenger seat of Star Chevy Malibu. Tilly blew her nose into a tissue and waved. Eight thirty. I don't even know if she'll go. Don't take no for an answer. You're the master at manipulation, not me. I persuade, not manipulate. And there's no secret to my charm. Sometimes fate just needs a little shove. <laughs> you sure you can convince Nate? He crossed his hands over his heart. You wound me. Have we met? <laughs> he wrapped his arms around her neck, tucked her against his body, and whispered. Do you think you might wear your hair down tonight? Are you okay? Sugar. He placed a soft kiss on her forehead. Be careful in dark parking lots. Has anybody ever told you that you're strange? Once or twice. AJ had been home a day, and in that time he'd managed to get drunk twice, get laid three times, and get slapped once. Finally, he recalled the sting of the palm of that new waitress at Critters. Sitting on the couch in what he was told was Gramps and Cam's house, and now Maggie's. He gawked at the coffee-colored walls, new crimson sofa, and recliner. A floral border made of roses and grass lined the top of each wall. Cam whipped. Never thought he'd see the day, but here it was, staring at him, blatant as a drunk teenage girl on prom night. Sitting on that new sofa with an almost empty plate of macaroni surprise that Cam had cooked, he palmed his racing heart. He had a full stomach and empty balls, so why the hell was he so wound up? Maybe it was all that shit Jag spouted about the future and Emily getting hurt. Over the years, Jags had teased about the visions he'd had about AJ. It was mostly stupid shit, like the teddy bear vision or whatever the hell that was. Lots of times, AJ never even figured out what the strange rantings were about. But this time was, was different. Jags's tone wasn't teasing. <sighs> Fuck. He knew this chick would be a headache. Maybe he just needed a smoke. AJ stared at his bouncing knee as if he could telepathically command his own extremity to be still while his fingers drummed on the arm of the couch. <sighs> on the other end of the sofa, his brother sat, immersed in the B-rated thriller playing on the flat screen. Gramps was asleep in a recliner. He raked a hand through his hair and just leapt off the couch. Where are you going? I need some air. When he opened the front door, a heavy hand gripped his shoulder. He turned and confronted his brother's scrutinizing glare. I'm fine. I'll be back. When Cam nodded, AJ dashed out the front door.
jump behind the wheel of his black jeep. Walking toward the back of the building, he smacked the bottom of the pack against the heel of his hand. His anxiety was already fading. He'd be sure to quit smoking tomorrow, but tonight his ass sat on the curb. The yellow glow from the shell sign offered little illumination, but AJ didn't want light. He wanted solitude, wide open space, and fresh air. You look a little old to be sneaking a cigarette. AJ inhaled in a funk like that of weak old trash invaded his nostrils. Who says I'm sneaking? The man shifted along the curb closer to AJ. He wore grease-stained jeans with a grease-stained red plaid shirt. The sleeves had been torn off, leaving only tattered white strings. His light brown hair was streaked with silver and was mostly tucked beneath a ratty Astro's cap. Why else would you be smoking on the side of a building in the middle of the night? Let's just say my brother's a little overprotective, and I'm not up for the lecture. AJ held out the pack. Appreciate it. The stinky man pushed the short sleeve of AJ's tee, revealing a tattoo of a human skull with two swords crossed behind it. U.S. Army. Me too. Gulf War. Uh, First Brigade. First Armored Division. He pointed to his own arm with the same depiction tattooed. Name's Carl. Hi, Carl. AJ looked the man up and down. His six o'clock shadow covered most of his face, making it a twelve o'clock shadow. You smell like ass. Hmm. A shiver trailed down AJ's spine. Was Carl a glimpse into his own future? AJ. A.J. Wolf. Italian? American. <laughs> Touché, my friend. See that really bright star? Yeah, they're all bright. Look above and to the left of the Big Dipper. I see it. I think... I think it might be a planet. You're not gonna start talking to yourself, are you? I can't see it from my place, so I sometimes come here, so I can get a better look. Your fruit! Lost in the desert. Hungry. Thirsty. Alone. Carl hung his head, his focus on the cement between his feet. A cloud of smoke billowed from Carl's lips. You want to know the secret to finding your way home? The army is my home. Civilian life isn't for me. Oh. Then why are you here? Because the army had not so politely asked him not to re-enlist. Something about his aversion to follow the chain of command. 
And then there was the Black Hole, a company he'd been working for as a mercenary for almost two years. They were even less polite than the U.S. Army. Something about AJ's lack of respect for authority. How long have you been back? AJ slid his phone from his back jean pocket. Uh, about 32 hours and 22 minutes. Beneath his boot, he crushed the butt of his cigarette. Give or take a minute. Glancing across the elegant dining room, Jack spotted Star. He waved his hands over his head and jumped up on his chair. Hey, Sugar! He patted the seat of the chair beside him, his gaze feasting on her blue, sparkling v-neck dress. You look fantastic. I can't believe you got us reservations here last minute. Wow, so beautiful. The restaurant was set on top of the Marriott and rotated, giving the guests a spectacular view of the city and airport. I've been dying to eat here. Ty won't take you? We just haven't gotten around to it. Good evening. Can I get you something to drink while you wait for the other guests to arrive? Water with lemon? I can't believe they let you in here dressed like that. What? He glanced at his maroon dress shirt, accented with a white tie covered in colorful polka dots. Is something wrong with the way I'm dressed? I'm... oh... Uh, I'm sorry, I... I didn't mean to... Would you like to order an appetizer? Sugar, do we want to order an appetizer? I think we'll wait. Thank you. She inserted the straw into her glass and chewed on the end while she sipped. <laughs> Show that thing some mercy. Excuse me? I can think of a few other ways to keep your mouth busy. You promised you wouldn't flirt. You're right. He reached in the front pocket of his pants. In his hand, he held out six packs of gum. Tastes a lot better than plastic. What kind is this? Maui Melon Mint. But I have more in the truck if you'd rather something else. More? What kind do you like? I'll just try this kind. What he wouldn't give to help her chew her gum. His own saliva dampened his mouth in anticipation. From the corner of his eye, he noticed Nate and Tilly approaching, led by the hostess. Tilly followed the pull of her husband's hand, her eyes down. Nate slid Tilly's chair out for her before sitting down himself. Jags reached across the table and grasped Tilly's hand. You look fantastic. He looked at Nate. And you are one lucky man. Did you order an appetizer? Jags stared at his friend's crotchety face. His enthusiasm to give Nate an ass ripping escalating. He'd prefer to tear into him another time, when they were in private. But he might have to escort him to the parking lot. Are you guys fucking? <gasps> Tilly gasped and smacked her husband on the shoulder. Maybe Star forgot to mention that she's already fucking someone. Someone she's set to marry. Jags debated for a fraction of a second whether he should inform Nate that Ty and Star were not fucking. Star and I are just friends. Then why did you drag us out? Sure seemed like a date to me. We need to talk. Fuck off. I understand things are difficult right now, but we are in an upscale restaurant, and if you don't want to get kicked out, you might want to refrain from using such vulgar language. Are you for real? I don't know how to be any other way. Just sit the fuck. Star tugged on Jag's maroon dress shirt. I mean, sit down. Sit down. With reluctance, Jags did as Star requested. Tonight wasn't the appropriate time to give Nate an ash ripping. He didn't want to add any unnecessary drama to the night. With any luck, Nate would have a few drinks and begin to loosen up.
Wolf Brothers Saga. Fiction for adults.com